Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. From domestic violence prevention to workers' rights programs, the Filipino community offers a range of valuable services. Organizational Director Terry Vallon is here to discuss all of them. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. All right, so tell me about the FCC. So we started 10 years ago, or about 10 years ago, so at the uh, end of this year, December 16, 2014, uh, will be our 10 year anniversary. We're going to have a big gala event uh, early next year, mm -hmm. co celebrating with the Bai Nihan Community Center, which opened in 2005. Uh, 10 years of work building a community, a stronger Filipino community here in San Francisco. We have a long history in the city, but opening up in the Excelsior neighborhood was the biggest concentration of Filipinos in the city, about 30% of the 40,000 or so Filipinos yeah. in the city. Uh, you know, we did a community needs assessment and, and really saw the needs of, which is still primarily a, a recent immigrant low income community. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to really be there and be accessible for the community that is still very much disconnected from city services, uh, even though there's a lot of support from the city. Which mm -hmm. is amazing to yeah. hear because there's such a big Filipino community yeah. here. Right, so about 40,000 in the city, there's been a decrease over the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's getting harder to live in the city, it's, it's, it's less affordable, uh, but resources and services and supports need to be there in the communities, in the schools, in the workplaces as well, um, because our community is still disconnected language-wise uh, and the cultural kind of specificity of our programs and services. All of that needs to be there for Filipinos, especially recent immigrants, to feel welcome in San Francisco. And you reach out to what, about a thousand? Yeah, through our different programs, activities, and events, um, both the Filipino Community Center and the Bayanihan Community Center reach thousands throughout the city uh, throughout the year. There's big festivals that we do both in the neighborhoods and, and kind of in the whole Bay Area region. Um, but through our day-to-day -day programs in local schools, uh, in the community, just being there and being accessible. Um, and we speak about five different Filipino languages and dialects in our, in our center. And then, you know, have activities that really engage uh, youth, families, uh, seniors, and especially recent immigrants with language specificity and cultural competency, which is really important for our community. Well, talk about some of those services. Yeah, so when we first opened up, you know, we did the basic thing. Come in, we'll help you with anything. But, you know, with the cultural competency, we were helping people just find basic jobs. From our needs assessment, it's a lot of the same issues that recent immigrant low-income communities face around affordable housing, finding jobs, health care, education. And so we opened up just doing that basic intake and assessment, information referrals and case management with community members. But quickly from the needs assessment, we also knew there were specific issues in our community like domestic violence, something that folks talked about in focus groups uh, when we did the needs assessment and uh, workers' rights, immigrant rights. A lot of undocumented Filipinos live in the city. About Our estimates are about a quarter of the, of the Fil whole Filipino population is undocumented as oh, well. Wow. So those things came up in our needs assessment and so we joined a collaborative of 13 organizations that provides free legal services, outreach and education about immigrant rights, uh, domestic violence prevention programs, uh, substance abuse prevention programs for youth, and leadership development in the local high schools in our neighborhood and across the city. So, How yeah. do you reach out? How do you get the word out? Yeah, so, you know, one of the basic ways is to be in the places where Filipinos gather in schools like Balboa High School, Burton High School, uh, which are close by in the neighborhood. Um, the churches, so Filipino churches is one, you know, or Catholic churches, different churches around the city are where a lot of Filipinos uh, go every Sunday. Um, but also opening up our center and doing activities that really engage the local community. So we did, you know, fun things like ballroom dancing. Filipinos are really into that, karaoke singing. <laughs> um, but just being there and having an open door and being really rooted and based okay. in the concentrated neighborhoods where the community is. The Excelsior and the South of Market neighborhood is where most of our community lives. And your work, it really, it reaches far beyond the Bay Area. Yeah, so, you know, doing work around, you know, um, workers' rights and immigrant rights. Uh, one of the campaigns that we work on and issues that we work on is wage theft. And there's a lot of Filipino caregivers working in care homes in San Francisco and around the Bay Area. A lot of them being being underpaid, uh, not even the minimum wage. So we call that wage theft, where we've helped to recover in the last few years over a million dollars in back wages or unpaid wages to workers who are being paid below the minimum wage. That campaign and other work we do around trafficking of Filipinos, so Filipinos who are forced to leave the Philippines and going in different industries like hotels, caregiving, uh, nursing, even teachers have been trafficked from the Philippines to come to the United States. 
So the FCC, the Filipino Community Center, is part of this National Alliance for Filipino Concerns, NAFCON, and we've tackled trafficking in the Filipino community across the whole country. Wow. Yeah. And quickly, you reached two significant milestones yes. last year? Yes. So in the last year, or this year, 2014, you know, recovering over a million dollars in back wages, but also one of the things that we worked on is language access in the city. Mm -hmm. And we got the city together with other community members and partners in the language access community to certify Tagalog as the third required language for the city of San Francisco for all of its official city communication. Wow. So we won that this year, and it's one of the ways we hope to continue to have a strong and thriving Filipino community in San Francisco. Well, Terry, thank you so much for coming on the show thank to you. talk about thank everything. You for us. And for more information on the Filipino Community Center's work, please log on to FilipinoCC.org. Again, that's FilipinoCC.org. Coming up, we'll hear from a thriving center for film in the North Bay.